May I ask a few friendly questions as my friend Jingo Estrada is uh, looking at me, trying to insinuate that I should limit my questions. I hope it's friendly, Mr. Congressman. <laughs> First of all, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make up record that I also, in full support of uh, Secretary Opless appointment, as Secretary of the Department of Migrant Workers. And I am very glad that uh, with the testimony of our Majority Leader, Secretary Ople, at some point uh, in his request for assistance, the Secretary was able to, to help in so many ways. And I congratulate you for that, Madam Secretary. But uh, we, we know that I think the total OFWs now, Filipino OFWs now scattered around the globe is more or less 10 million uh, OFWs, uh, if I'm correct, Madam Secretary? Uh, around 10.5 million, po, sir. Yes, and uh, maybe outside the United States, uh, most of them are in Saudi Arabia, if I'm not mistaken, Madam. Yes, sir, that's the top and biggest uh, labor destination, sir. I, I am informed that the most common problem in uh, Saudi Arabia, in so far as our OFWs are concerned, they have a local uh, term. Uh, they call it Urub. Urub is absconding from a contract. Ito po yata yung pinakamarami doon, madam. And more often than not, ito po yung alagang pinagkakaabalahan ng ating pamahalaan kung paano sila matutulungan sapagkat uh, madali po kasing mag-abscon, lalong-lalo kung hindi sila nagkasundo, nag-away halimbawa, kasi po, halimbawa po yung term na warat. Sa kanila po yung warat ay isang kanin na parang panis kung sa atin. Halimbawa, alam mo naman si Senador Jingo yan eh. Ma Maselan po yan. Pag nakita niya yung kanin, aamuyin niya yan eh. Nakikita pag kumakain kami, lalo nangangampanya kami, masyadong maselan yan. Pag naamuy po, po, po niya na masim-masim, sabi niya, warat. Sa Saudi po, madam, kaya po pala umaasim yung kanin. Binabalot pala nila sa dahon ng ubas, pero hindi talaga panis yun, kaya lang umaasim. Sa Saudi po, yun ang pinakamasarap. Pero pag naibigay po sa ating OFWs, siyempre nagsisintimiento po yung mga Pilipino, mga kababayan natin kasi nagsusumbong sila ngayon sa, sa polo, sa labat. Pinakakain po sa amin, panis. Aalis po ngayon siya, magkakaroon ng... So, kailangan po ninyo na mapag-aralan lahat po ang mga pinanggagalingan ng lahat ng ganitong um, pinag-uugatan, lahat ng uh, problema. Napakalaki po ng responsibilidad na to. Madam, kaya kami po ay nagtitiwala na kahit na mabigat at malaki ang responsibilidad ay kakayanin po ninyo. Meron pa silang isang local language, Madam uh, Secretary, Mr. Chair. Wasta, sabi po nila. Yung wasta, sa atin pong uh, pagkakaunawa, wasta, <laughs> kabaligtaran po ng tawas, is, is a connection that might help in your work. Kailangan makapag-establish kayo ng connection. Siguro po, gaya ng binabanggit ni Kong Elray, dahil nga... Nakatulong na rin po siguro yung legacy na iniwan ng inyong ama sapagkat mat matagal siyang nagsilbi sa ating pamahala. Nakilala rin kayo in some respects. Siguro po ay uh, you take advantage of, of this and secure more of uh, anything that would help you uh, help our uh, WS in foreign lands. Kasi yun po talaga ang kailangan, kailangan nila because they're too far away from our government and sometimes uh, time is of the essence para lang maibsan yung kanilang pangangailangan. 
Gusto ko pong magtanong, uh, Madam Secretary, doon po sa OWA Fund. Tama po ba na ang inyong OWA Fund ngayon ay about 18 billion pesos? Tama po yun, sir. At ito po ay nakalagak yata sa tatlong banko ng ating bansa, PNB, DBP, at saka yung Land Bank, na tig si 6 billion pesos bawat isa. Sir, I would have to check dun sa um, tatlong banko and yung current amounts, current levels po, sir. Opo. Uh, yung iba pong pinanggagaling o pinagkakagasta ni ata rito ay yung programs and services to OFWs. Ang uh, isa po ay welfare at saka po yung membership promotion. Tama po ba ito, Madam Secretary? Yes, sir. Uh, kasama na po dyan yung burial assistance, yung scholarship funds po ng OWA, yung emergency repatriation assistance, at marami pa po mga programa para sa ating OFWs. Sir, uh, sa Land Bank po um, at saka sa DBP, po nahate yung OWA fund. So, tag 9 billion po currently sa dalawang banko, sir. Sa pondo po bang ito, pwede pang tulungan natin yung mga kababayan natin na natulungan nyo na dati, nakauwi na po sa ating bansa, nabigyan po sila ng kawakulang financial assistance. Ngunit hanggang sa ngayon po ay parang nahihirapan pa rin at nangangailangan pa rin sila ng konting tulong. Kung pwede pa rin ba silang matulungan kasi po ito ipinatatanong lang sa akin? Yes, sir. In fact, nagde-develop po kami ng mga programa para sa mga ex-OFWs para po sa reintegration nila. And uh, alam niyo naman po na sa tulong din po ng Kongreso, may dagdag na pondo po yung OWA para makatulong din po sa ating mga OFWs maski hindi po miyembro ng, ng OWA. Matutuwa po yung uh, isang uh, kababayan nating nag-text po sa akin ngayon at pwede ko bang ibigay ang pangalan niya at saka numero niya sa iyo pagkatapos ng ating uh, hearing, uh, Madam Secretary, para malaman naman po ng opisina ninyo kung ano po yung kanyang gusto pang hilingin na tulong mula sa inyo. Yes sir, pwedeng pwede po at uh, malugod po namin siyang uh, kakausapin kung may mga dagdag po na proposals, nandito lang po kami para makinig po. Yung pinaka problema po kasi ng pinanggagalingan pa ng ating mga OFWs, Madam Secretary, ito po yung, uh, di ko po alam kung paano ninyo uh, pagsisikapang ayusin, yun po kasing ugnayan ng local uh, recruitment agency sa ating bansa, meron po siyang kausap na foreign recruitment agency. Uh, pag, pag nagkaroon po ng problema, ay uh, ang uh, hindi nakakatuloy yung foreign recruitment agency at kung minsan yun namang uh, local din natin ay halos hirap din, pwede kayang uh, magawa natin ng paraan, Madam Secretary, na yung pananagutan ng local uh, recruitment agency at saka yung foreign agency, total, their partners in... Uh, in recruiting people from our country to be placed uh, in other parts of the world, maging joint and solidary para sa ganun, it might provide an added protection to our OFWs. Yes, sir. Existing na po yung policy na yan. Ang um, nais po namin i-address sa Department of Migrant Workers yung din pong pananagutan ng foreign recruitment agencies at foreign employers. Kaya po, next year, meron na po kaming action fund. Pwede na po namin ikuha ng abogado yung ating mga manggagawa po sa abroad para po yung... yung uh, kasi madalas naman po yung nananakit, yung nanggagahasa, yung nang, nang aape, yun po yung mga foreign employers, yung mga hindi rin tumutulong, hindi kaagad na... Um, uh, nakikipag-ugnayan kahit sa kanilang local agency yung mga foreign recruitment agencies po. So ang gusto po namin um, hindi lang po approve ng approve kundi tingnan din yung kalidad ng foreign employers po at ng foreign recruitment agencies at pati na rin po yung mga uh, 
recruitment agencies po natin dito kasi may mga foreign owned din po, may mga tie-ups din po at yun po yung nakakasama sa welfare po ng ating mga OFW, sir. Wala po pala tayong opisina ng uh, Polo o OWA sa Thailand, Cambodia, tsaka sa New Zealand. Tama po ba ito, Madam Secretary? Um, meron, magkakaroon na po tayo sa Bangkok, Thailand by first quarter of next year po. At sa New Zealand, I think mer meron, no? Huh? Meron po uh, tayo sa New Zealand. Sa Cambodia po, medyo maliit pa po yung numero ng ating mga OFWs. Unlike po sa Thailand na nasa 30 mil na po usually, um, mostly po mga teachers ang nasa Thailand, sir. I was informed also, Madam Secretary, that there is a little bit difficulty uh, on the part of your department to uh, deploy as many or as much in employees to help you because sometimes it's a country per country uh, situation like in Saudi Arabia you're only allowed to deploy or man people in your office there based on reciprocity meaning to say if the Philippines uh, all, uh, only allotted 10 people to the Saudi embassy the same uh, Arrangement is also allotted to you, meaning to say you will only have an, also 10 people and, and therefore you are limited to the kind and number of people that you will deploy. Is this correct, uh, Madam Secretary? Yes, sir. Uh, that is covered by the Vienna Convention, sir. Yeah. And that's why it's very important that uh, the DMW and the DFA, and we have started to do this, po, that we, uh, both departments will have to sit down. And because the law creating the DMW has mandated uh, our department to handle ATN cases, so we need po, to uh, discuss the transition period and also the structure of our migrant workers offices in various posts po. Um, and, and the DFA has expressed willingness to, to discuss this with us, sir. We also need to restructure our migrant workers offices now known as POLO because we would need to have at least three uh, assistant labor attaches to mirror the structure of the department. So one for welfare, one for policy, and uh, one for uh, adjudication or resolving or addressing by dispute, sir. In, in the transition, madam, the uh, office in the DFA, which is known as the Office of the Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs, will now be relegated to... Uh, to your office, is that correct? Right now, sir, UMWA continues to exist. Um, I, I think uh, we have initiated talks with them on the transition period because, uh, as you know, uh, the retainers for the law firms are still with the DFA, sir. Um, also, our own personnel would have to be trained on the intricacies of uh, ATN work. But this will be happening next year, sir, and uh, we agreed on a mirroring arrangement wherein even the contacts of our ATN officers overseas in various embassies will be shared with our Polo or MWO offices worldwide. To be sitting in this chair, Mr. Chairman, and your honors, as an ad interim appointee of President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. What would your kind approval of my ad interim appointment mean to me, my OFWs, and the DMW? If with your blessing I am confirmed today, this would mean strength and stability for our new department in serving our OFWs in a world of volatility, uncertainty, and complexity. It would also mean a solid standing for yours truly as their designated guardian and protector in host countries, and an affirmation of the rights-based approach 
to overseas employment, a policy track that has the full understanding and approval of our president. Before my appointment as Ad Interim Secretary of the Department of Migrant Workers, I have worked alongside the esteemed members of Congress and the Senate as a resource person on agenda items that affect our OFWs. I personally witnessed and expressed my gratitude to our legislators, consistently championing the rights and welfare of our modern day heroes, to include the amendment of the Migrant Workers Act, to include as an illegal recruitment violation, the reprocessing of overseas labor contracts, which was a result of a specific case handled by my NGO, the Blasef Ople Policy Center, involving 153 bus drivers who were illegally recruited and suffered greatly in Dubai. We also witnessed the huge relief on the part not only of our OFWs, but all Filipino travelers, when both chambers of Congress amended the Passport Act making our Philippine passport valid for 10 years instead of five. In public hearings that have to do with the human trafficking of our OFWs, then and now, I have always been a constant presence. And even when some NGOs and private sector groups questioned the wisdom of having a new department for migrant workers, the Blas F. Ople Policy Center, an NGO named after my father, that I have humbly, humbly led for 17 years, stood its ground because we knew the clamor was real and the needs of our OFWs were urgent. Mr. Chairman, your honors, when my father, the late and former DFA secretary and Senate president, Kablas Ople, died in December 14, 2003, I pledged to dedicate my life helping our migrant workers. Yan na po ang panata ng buhay ko. It was and continues to be my way of honoring him, of keeping him close to me, and remembering the legacy that he worked hard for. Para sa akin po bilang kanyang bunso, sa bawat OFW na aming natutulungan, katumbas puno ng isang bulaklak na tinatanim sa hardin ng kanyang alaala. Mr. Chairman, Your Honors, with your blessing and approval, I would be able to proceed next week to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, visit our embassy shelters, discuss the pending claims of around 10,000 displaced workers, which no less than the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia promised to resolve in his bilateral talks with our president in Bangkok, Thailand and to look at potential job opportunities with greater safeguards against abuse and exploitation. I will do so with a lighter heart and a firm resolve to do what's right, to do what's best, because your vote today would be an affirmation that our OFWs deserve the best home in government that we together can build. Mr. Chairman, your honors, with your blessing and approval, the DMW to God, together with the DOH can finalize the details for a scholarship fund to balance our need for health workers here at home with a global demand, specifically for our excellent Filipino health workers across the globe. We shall also be launching the digital OEC within the month of December, which has been decreed by law as the month of OFWs. In January, when the DMW has been fully constituted, this digital app will feature more services, including links to credible payment service providers, thus making it easier for our workers to transact with our migrant workers' offices and OWA, as well as other relevant agencies. And on reintegration, Mr. Chairman and our dear CA members, the DMW has entered into talks with Go Negosyo, the DICT, TESDA, and other institutions to help returning OFWs find their economic niche. Mr. Chairman, Honorable CA Members, when I was, when I was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer two years ago, it was a period of soul-searching, of 
personal change and spiritual reflection. It was Father Jerry Obrebos, SBD, a fellow cancer mate, who reminded me of BTS. BTS stands for Believe, Trust, Surrender. Every morning for me is a gift, not to be wasted. I believe and trust in the CA's collective wisdom and surrender my faith to you and to the Lord Almighty. More than anyone else in this room, he knows me and claims me as his. May, may God bless us all. Thank you, po, distinguished chair, your honors. Thank you for that uh, commitment, Madam Secretary. The chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Jingo here, Sito Estrada, uh, Representative Oscar Oka Malapitan. To ask the first uh, questions, may we request our majority leader, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's like to manifest that there is no better person to lead this newly created agency uh, but the Honorable Secretary. Uh, just, I would just like to share to our colleagues and the public listening that even before she was appointed as secretary, her life dedication to our migrant workers is present and can be felt. Ako po mismo magsasabi, three, four years ago, uh, meron po akong constituent na nangangailangan ng tulong sa abroad. Kaparami, Hong Kong, Riyadh, iba't ibang bansa. Ang tinatawagan ko po, hinihingi ang ko po ng tulong para matulungan ang mga kababayan ko na nangangailangan. Hindi po ang Secretary ng Labor. Ang hiniha ko ng tulong si Secretary Toots Ople. And I am proud to say that na-action na natutulungan. Most recently po, two days ago, meron po akong kababayan from Kamarinisur. Yung asawa niya po ay namatay sa Taiwan, November 1. Is, kulang ko lang isang buwan na po, hindi nakakauwi. Tinex ako ng asawa. Sabi ko, tatawagan ko po si Secretary Toots Ople. Wala pang five minutes nag-action na, tumawag na po sa akin ang asawa. Tumawag na rin po ang uh, Department of Migrant Workers. Makakauwi na po ang sa kanyang asawa. At constantly nag-update ko ano ang nangyari. Sinasabi ko po ito dahil ito po totoong nangyari. And I am very confident that the legacy commitment of Cablas, who, was, uh, who also worked with, kasama po ng aking amayan sa Marcos Cabinet. My father was Secretary of Trade at si Cablas po ay nasa kabinete. I'm sure the legacy that your father Cablas instilled upon you, you will continue. That is all, Mr. Chair. At gusto ko lang pong express ang aking... 1,001 support for Secretary Toots Ople. I've known her for over 10 years, and her heart and dedication for our countrymen, especially our migrant workers, is in her blood, in her heart, in her soul. So, yan lang po. Maraming salamat. You have my full uh, confidence and vote, Secretary Toots. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader. The Honorable uh, GP Pajarnos is recognized. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Secretary. May we know from the nominee what are the common challenges of FW abroad and what are the specific plans of the, no the nominee to help our Kamabayan? Before the good secretary will answer, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of Representative Lani Mercado Rivilla. Madam Secretary, please answer. Yes, sir. Maraming salamat po sa, sa tanong, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with your permission. Um, napakarami pong challenges sa ngayon. Alam naman po natin, mayroong looming global recession. Nararamdaman na rin po natin yan dito. Um, yung tuloy po ng mga welfare cases dahil sa pang-aabuso, uh, marahil dahil na rin po sa sistema kung saan hindi masyadong naski-screen yung kalidad ng mga uh, foreign employers, sir. Yun po yung gusto namin i-address sa ating uh, bagong department. Yung epekto po ng climate change na nagtutulak sa napakaraming Pilipino na i-consider magtabaho sa abroad. And yung kakulangan din po ng uh, 
disenteng trabaho dito sa ating sariling bansa na nagiging source po ng uh, uh, attraction na maski uh, illegal recruiters pinapatulan po ng iba nating mga kababayan. Sa amin po sa department, napakahalaga po na ayusin namin yung struktura ng DMW para makarespond sa mga ganyang uri ng problema. Nagpapasalamat po kami dahil for the first time po magkakaroon ng budget ang amin department. Uh, hopefully by January po, uh, again, with the blessings and support po of the members of Congress and the Senate. And uh, yun po namang feminization of... Uh, labor migration, tinitingnan din po namin uh, through reintegration programs po para makat yung cycle na yung nanay umaalis bilang kasambahay, susundan ng ate, aalis din bilang kasambahay, tapos yung apo, aalis din. Ang gusto po namin, magkaroon ng financial literacy at reintegration programs para po yung Aalis bilang OFW, pagbalik po ay success story pa rin. At yung kanilang pamilya, tunay na may aahon nila mula sa kahirapan, sir. Thank you po. Mr. Chair, so napakagaling talaga ng ating uh, Madam Secretary and I do believe na kayang-kaya mo yan with your advocacy uh, na nasa magandang kalagayan po ang ating Babayan under your leadership as secretary. So with that, Mr. Chair, uh, I will get my full support, uh, Secretary Ople. Salamat po. Salamat din po, sir. Thank you. Uh, we now acknowledge uh, to give us uh, support also, Senator JV, then after that, Senator Jingori, then Congressman Secretary Baria and Senator Bongo. Senator JV, uh, you now have the floor. Or you want to yield? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a very, uh, short manifestation, of course. Uh, we support as I may. I agree with the majority leader that the, no other person is uh, perfect for the job of being the first secretary of that part of migrant workers than uh, um, Secretary Susan Tutz Ople. No, pag sinabing Ople, alam na natin yan, labor. But, uh, she has made a no thing for herself, uh, taking care and uh, watching over our um, OFWs no, through the years. And I had the honor, I I would say, I had the honor of um, of uh, defending the very first budget of the Department of Migrant Workers. And I wouldn't have uh, been more better no, than uh, to have... Secretary Toots, no, to be at the helm of this uh, department. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, the Chair, Dr. Nalim, Senator Jingoy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, back to back. Uh. And I would like uh, to associate myself with these statements made by uh, Congressman Elray. And I was uh, so elated and happy when the president uh, appointed her to head the Department of Migrant Workers, because I feel that she was the perfect choice to lead the uh, department. And I've known the nominee several years back when I was, during my first and second term as a senator, uh, being the chairman of the Committee on Labor, and I worked closely with her, and she gave a lot of inputs uh, that's why uh, we crafted a lot of uh, bills with regard to uh, by uh, our labor committee. So with that, uh, Mr. Chair, if there are no other members of the uh, commission to ask questions, I, I move that we recommend her to the plenary right away. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, we'll finish first. Uh... Congressman Sagar Baria, then Senator Bongo, and uh, Congressman Marcoleta. Congressman uh, Sagar Baria. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Madam Secretary, uh, this is just uh, a reminder of the commitment we talked the other day about the, uh, your certificate of employment that our migrant workers are having problems with, and you promise that you are going to handle this, especially giving it to them in an electronic basis, in an electronic form, so it will be much faster, easier, and cheaper. 
So you will stand. I hope you will stand to your commitment. And at this point, uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to my manifest my full support for the nomination of the ad interim appointment of Madam Ople. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Sagarbaria. Senator Bongo. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. At hindi uh, ko na kailangan magpagitna sa dalawang Senat Senator Estrada. Sabi ko at saka hindi ko na kailangan sa gitna ninyo umupo. Masaya ako na labing na kayong dalawa. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, my distinguished uh, colleagues and everyone here today would like to manifest my utmost uh, support for that interim appointment of Secretary Maria Susana Tuts, Vasquez Oplo, and Secretary of the Department of Migrant Workers. This agency is very close to my heart since it apoko sa mga authors ng bill ng for its establishment, the past Congress, we heard the call of our OFWs and we answered. Mr. Chair, Secretary of Place from the land of the heroes, Provincia po ng mga Makata, ang Provincia po ng Bulacan. She's the youngest daughter of the late Senate uh, President uh, Blas Ople, who also proved his undying love for the country by serving in several significant positions in the legislative and executive branches of the government. Kaya naman po, hindi nakakapagtaka that Secretary Ople chose to serve the people and follow the footsteps of her late father. During the term of former President Duterte, one of the priorities of his administration was to strengthen the rights and privileges ng ating mga OFWs at ng kanilang pamilya. Ang DMW na po ang pangarap natin noon na isa katuparan na po ito ngayon. No less than a staunch advocate for migrant workers at its helm. Uh, nito lamang po nakarang linggo ay bumalik po tayo sa kauna-unahang OFW hospital sa San Fernando, Pampanga. Isa po ito sa matagal na nating pangarap para sa ating mga OFW, kanilang mga pamilya. Ano isa katuparan rin po natin. Sinal ko rin po pununtahan upang buksan ang kanilang malasakit center doon po mismo sa OFW Hospital para tumugon po sa mga medical needs ng mga pamilya ng ating mga OFWs. Ang Department of Migrant Workers at OFW Hospitals ay parehas pong katibayan that when the legislative and executive branches of government work together, there really is nothing that cannot be done. I am confident that with her passion, and qualifications, and as a known proven advocate of our overseas Filipino workers, Secretary Ople will do an exemplary job bilang ina ng ating mga migrant workers. Secretary Ople, alam ko po na nakikita ninyo kung gaano kalaki ang pangailangan ng ating mga kababayan na nagsasakripisyo sa ibang bansa just to provide for their families. Uh, napakahirap pong mapalayo sa pamilya, ngunit pinili nilang magtrabaho doon. Alagaan po natin sila. Huwag po natin sayangin ang sakripisyo nila at patunayan din po natin kung gaano kahalaga sa atin na tinatawag natin silang mga modern day heroes. At uh, tulungan po natin, lalong lalo na po, yung mga nananawagan sa radyo noon, sa telebisyon, sa Facebook, na kailangan ng tulong. I'm sure, kasama yung mga staff mo, mga USEX, and uh, po, very competent naman po silang lahat. Napakagaling, napaka-experience. Uh, uh, ikasurin talaga natin, bigyan natin sila ng importansya, ang ating mga modern day heroes po. Madam Secretary, siguraduhin po natin na mabilis at epektibo ang pag-aksyon ng ating gobyerno, particular na po ang inyong opisina uh, sa kanilang mga daing at hindi masayang ang kanilang mga sakripisyo. The Filipino people deserves, deserve only the best. Secretary Ople, support po ako para sa inyo Makakasap po ako at uh, unahin po natin yung kapakanan ng mga mahirap. Walang matakbuhan yung mga helpless at yung mga hopeless. Salamat po uh, sa inyong servisyo, Secretary Ople. Uh, I just wish to put on record my uh, full support to the confirmation of uh, Secretary uh, Susan Ople. I know this lady for uh, almost two decades and... Uh, I have uh, 
no doubt on the competence and uh, integrity of uh, the nominee. But uh, a very specific question, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I had a recent visit uh, in Korea and I learned from the ambassador uh, of the Philippines to Korea the predicament of some of our um, women workers there. A specific question, Madam Secretary. Uh, when a when a migrant worker is deployed for uh, a specific employment uh, in, in Korea, uh, and uh, during the course of their employment, they get married to a local guy. So by, by virtue, of the immigration law of the host country, uh, they become permanent residents by virtue of their marriage to the local Korean guy. Does this change the status of the migrant worker insofar as your, your department is concerned by, by the law creating uh, your department? Yes, sir. Um... I think, sir, for Korea, it's really government to government uh, deployment of our workers. So, um, if the worker uh, is married and then his status as a citizen changes, then uh, he or she will now be covered by the DFA as a either as a permanent resident or as a foreign spouse. Um, but if the, the work contract is a continuing one under the government-to-government -government, uh, arrangement, then the DMW is still there, sir, to protect her rights um, and, and to make sure that uh, the, the terms and conditions of the contract um, would still be um, affirmed and upheld, sir. So, meaning to say, uh, if the worker, uh, despite her marriage to a local guy, continues to fulfill his contract, he is still covered, you know, protected by government. Is that correct? Yes, sir, because you are talking about two different dimensions to her um, uh, identity as a, a Filipino worker and then her identity as a, as a, spouse. As a spouse. Okay. If uh, she continues with her contract as signed and approved by the Philippine government and the South Korean government, then we still have an obligation, sir, just to make sure that those uh, terms and conditions um, continue to to be applied uh, in, in her behalf, sir. I mean, we are looking at the employment aspect, but uh, on, on the other legal dimensions po, sir, the DFA is there for her as a, a uh, uh, dual citizen especially, sir. All right. So we would assume a dual citizenship as far as their foreign employment and her marriage to the local guy. But I think, uh, Madam Secretary, the problem uh, is more on uh, when this uh, um, female uh, migrant worker uh, terminates he, her her uh, her employment contract with her employer, then now becomes part of the system by virtue of their marriage, of her marriage, they terminated or they uh, they allow the contract to expire, and then they get employment, a new employment, into the Korean system, so they are no longer covered because this is a fresh employment by virtue of her being a resident of, of Korea. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, but, sir, you know, the third uh, pillar of our foreign policy is assistance to nationals. And so um, she would still enjoy the mantle of protection from the Philippine government, sir. And yes. um, But, uh, as you've said, and correctly so, um, her contact will now be that of a, um, depending on her citizenship, sir, if uh, she acquires the citizenship of the husband, then that would be uh, the prevailing one, sir. Uh, yes, I'm going to that next question, Madam Secretary, because this is where the problem is right now. They get married, they don't become necessarily a Korean citizen, uh, 
they assume the permanent resident status, but for some reason, a good number of Filipinas get divorced. So, divorce sa Korea, and it's easy to get divorced. So, the problem of our embassy is how to provide employment opportunities to these female divorcees natin. Oh, yun nang naging problema. They came as migrant workers, they finish the term of their employment, they get into the system of the, of the Korean um, employment system, they, they, they get employed by virtue of them becoming, by, by virtue of them having been considered as a permanent resident, which is easier for them to get employed when they are already residents. Hindi na tayo covered ng gov government G2G. Ang problema, they get divorced. When they get divorced, they could hardly find employment. How do we address that problem? Sir, I, I think uh, it's the acquisition of skills that would make them marketable, whatever their uh, citizenship or uh, resident status uh, would be. I, I mean, if their value to any employer will rely on the skills that uh, that person possesses, sir. I understand, Madam Secretary, that it's really skill-based, right? Pero alam naman po natin that we get discriminated. If uh, pareho lang yung skill na Pinoy, di pareho din yung skill ma-offer ng Koreano, lamang sila. So that is something that I just want to deliver to you so that perhaps, you know, when you visit Korea or any other country, you could look into this concern. I will make a comment, uh, Madam Secretary. I would like to acknowledge the presence of the chairperson of the committee on appointments, Senator President Mig Zubiri. Madam Secretary, please. Yeah, that's all, Madam Secretary, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Thank you, po, sir, for sharing that information. We will certainly look into it, sir. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, since all issues have been raised, questions have been answered, I move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointment of Secretary Maria Susana Vasquez Ople as Secretary of the Department of Migrant Workers. I so move, Mr. Chair. Uh, before you act on the motion of the Majority Leader, I just want to say one thing. If there's anyone who was born for the job, it is this lady here. She was born for the job as a chairperson or secretary of OFWs and, of course, to the labor sector. So no one else deserves this post except for you, particularly this administration. So I'd like to second the motion of our majority leader to approve her confirmation. Thank you, Mr. Chen, President. Thank you, Po Salahat and Mr. Chen. Yeah, there's a motion duly seconded. Any objection? Hearing none, the motion is uh, by approved. Mr. Chair, Congratulations. Mr. Chair, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn the meeting.